Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we are discussing how to prove lines parallel. So previously before this lesson, we learned about what it means to have parallel lines and a transversal. And we learned all about alternate interior, alternate exterior, con uh, corresponding angles, consecutive interior, and things like that. So today what we're gonna talk about is not if we have two lines parallel with a transversal, but we're going to talk about, hey, if I have this special situation with two lines, can I prove that those lines are actually parallel? And so you're going to see we actually have the converse, which is, remember, the converse of a hypothesis and conclusion just simply means you reverse the statements, you switch the statements order. That's going to actually be the theorem that we're going to be using for all of these um, almost mini proofs. Okay, it says state the theorem or postulate that justifies whether the lines are parallel or not. So let's say I gave you this diagram and I've got lines A, B, and C. And notice they're not marked that they're parallel. We want to prove whether or not they're parallel based on these statements. And we're going to actually list the theorem that lets us say that. And again, they're always going to be the converse because now it's in the opposite order. Instead of saying, hey, because the lines are parallel and these are these angles, we're going to be able to say, well, hey, because of this angle relationship, I can now say they're parallel. So if I said to you that angle one was congruent to angle three. Now, if you look at angle one and angle three, you notice that angle one and angle three are along this line. Okay, this is a transversal. And notice they're intersecting that transversal with line A and line B. So if angle one is congruent to angle three, now think about it, these are, these would be corresponding angles. So if these two corresponding angles are congruent to each other, then that means that A is parallel to B. Okay, so line A is parallel to line B, and it would be by the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So you can call it converse of the corresponding angles postulate or just say corresponding angles postulate converse. Either order is okay. So this is what we're doing in this lesson. We are proving that lines are parallel based on these special angle relationships we learned from our previous lesson. If I said to you that the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four is equal to 180, if these two angles add up to 180, so notice they're on this transversal line, they're dealing with lines B and C. Now remember two and four, if, they, if lines B and C are parallel, it's that would mean that um, angle two and angle four are consecutive interiors and consecutive interiors add up to 180. So if I'm telling you these two angles add up to 180, then that would mean that line B is parallel to line C by the consecutive interior angles converse. Or you can say the converse of the consecutive interior angles theorem. Last one here. If the measure of angle one is 100 and the measure of angle four is 105, so if I'm telling you that this interior angle and this interior angle have different measures, 100, I know it's a little bright on the screen, it's hard to see, and 105, that they're not the same, then the statement I can make for sure is that line A is definitely not parallel to line C. Now, if angle four was 100, then I would be able to say, hey, angle, I'm sorry, line A and line C are parallel because of the alternate interior angles theorem converse. But because they are different from each other, they're not congruent, I'd be able to say, <coughs> excuse me, because of the alternate interior angles converse, that I know for a fact these are not going to be parallel to each other. Line A and line C are definitely not. Okay. All right, so here we have a diagram, next problem. It says find the measure of angle A, B, F. Find the measure of angle A, B, F. So this angle here, so that line G, E is parallel to line D, A. <clears throat> so if I wanna prove, if I wanna find the measure of this angle so that these two lines are parallel to each other, that would mean that this would be an interior angle and so would this. And that would have to mean that these two angles have to be congruent to each other. Their measures would have to be equal. So I'd be able to say, okay, well, this angle here that I'm trying to find and this angle here, if they are equal to each other and I find the measure of what that angle should be, then it definitely would make them parallel. 
So I would have to set these equal to each other. So 7x plus 35 is equal to 11x minus 25, okay? And if I set them equal to each other, I end up getting my value for x is 15. Always have to make sure we read the problem though. It says find the measure of angle ABF. So then I'd have to take this x and substitute it in for 7x plus 35, which gives me an angle of 140. So if I wanted to find the angle measure that makes these two lines parallel, it would be if it's 140 and 140, okay? Because if alternate interior angles are, are congruent or their measures are equal, then those two lines are parallel to each other. So here's basically what's happening. If corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are um, parallel. If alternate interior angles are congruent, the two lines are parallel. If alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. If consecutive interior angles are supplementary, they're parallel. Or if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, okay? If two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then those two lines are parallel to each other. So we're basically taking everything that we've already talked about, and now we're just kind of reversing this statement. Before it was, hey, if these lines are parallel, you can say all of these things that are here listed. But now we're just saying the opposite. That, hey, if I have this angle relationship, then that means that my lines are parallel to each other. Okay, so proving lines parallel. I've got this um, sheet that I'm going to go through. We've got some proofs that we're going to take a look at. So here is basically what I just mentioned before, okay? If corresponding angles are congruent, if alternate interior angles are congruent, if alternate exterior, consecutive interior are supplementary, they add up to 180, or if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then the lines are parallel. So you could have any of these five cases, all right, would mean they're parallel. So let's take a look at this problem here. If angle one is congruent to angle five, okay, if angle one is congruent to angle five, then I would be able to say that Line A is definitely parallel to line B, but what's the reason? Why can I say that? Think about what angle one and angle five are to each other. It would be the converse of the corresponding angles postulate because those are corresponding angles. If angle four is congruent to angle six, what would I be able to say then? Then I could, yep, say angle, I'm sorry, line A is parallel to line B. And think about what's the relationship between four and six. That would be the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. If two angle two is congruent to angle eight, I could still say a line A is parallel to line B. That would be the converse of alternate interior angles theorem. If I said the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five equals up to 180, again, I then would be able to say line A is parallel to line B. And that's your converse of consecutive interior angles theorem. If I said to you that angle two was congruent to angle four, if angle two is congruent to angle four, I can't really say anything about lines being parallel because angle two and angle four, remember those are vertical angles and vertical angles have nothing to do with us proving lines are parallel. Last one, if I say that line A is perpendicular to line C and B is also perpendicular to line C, okay, so A and C are perpendicular, B and C are perpendicular, and of course this diagram does not show right angles, so we can't say the diagram is drawn to scale at all. But if A and B are both perpendicular to line C, then that would mean that line A is parallel to line B. And that's the converse of the perpendicular transversal theorem. We previously learned about the perpendicular transversal theorem in a previous lesson. Okay, so now we have, let me just look in my notes. We have, I believe, yes, four proofs that we're going to take a look at. So it says here, given angle three and angle eight are supplementary, we have to prove that line A is parallel to line B. So we always know in a proof, guys, in a two-column proof or any kind of proof, the first thing we do is we list the given, and the reason is simply it's given. Notice there's only one line here, so that means I can jump right to saying that line A is parallel to line B. And we already know this reason. We saw it in the last um, table problem. It would be the converse of the consecutive interior angles postulate. So because these two angles add up to 180, 
okay? I would be able to say that. And we know because supplementary means that they add up to 180. Okay, if I gave you this, given angle DEG and angle GEF are complementary. So DEG and GEF are complementary. I'm also given that DE is perpendicular to DG. Okay, so these two angles are complementary. We know what that means. They add up to 90. We also know that DE is um, perpendicular to DG. So that is what's given to us. Now, think about what we can say as a next statement for sure. Our, what we're trying to prove is that DG is parallel to EF. So we have two angles here that are complementary. They add up to 90. Okay, so keep that in mind. And we're also told, again, that DE is perpendicular to DG. So I'm just going to draw a little right angle here. And because that says they're complementary, I'm going to want a game plan about talking about how those are right angles. So then think about it. If I know that um, DEG and GEF are complementary, then that would mean that the sum of those two angles is equal to 90. Okay, that's our definition of complementary angles. Which then means that EDG is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, because that would be the sum. And it's the definition of perpendicular lines. If we're told that... Um, they're adding up to 90, then that means that those two lines would be perpendicular and that um, angle would add up to 90. Let me zoom out. Wait, no, I don't need to. Okay, so then I would then be able to say that DG is parallel to line EF. These two segments are then parallel to each other because notice if this is a right angle and this is a right angle and they're both um, perpendicular to DE, then DG has to be parallel to uh, EF because of the converse of consecutive interior angles postulate. That would be one way you could say it. You could also do converse of the perpendicular transversal theorem, um, but notice because it says 90 and 90, since those are both 90 degrees, and 90 and 90 would add up to 180, okay? I would be able to say consecutive interior angles postulate because remember that's about the interiors adding up to 180. And again, the other option I could have done is that perpendicular transversal theorem since DG is uh, perpendicular to DE and DE is perpendicular to, D to EF, um, I would be able to make that statement. Next one, given angle one is congruent to angle two and angle one is congruent to angle four. Okay, so this is interesting. Angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle one is congruent to angle four. We have to somehow prove that DE is parallel to GF. Okay, so now let's try to game plan. So these two are congruent to each other, and these two are congruent. I'm sorry, one and four are congruent to each other. But look how four and two are actually alternate interior angles. And so if I can say that angle two is congruent to angle four, then because they're alternate interiors, then I would be able to say that by the converse of alternate interior angles theorem, DE is definitely parallel to GF. So I need to make that statement that angle two is congruent to angle four. Notice they have angle one in common. That would be my transitive property of congruence. So if angle one is congruent to angle two and angle one is congruent to angle four, then I can say angle two is congruent to angle four. That's my transitive property. And now because these are congruent to each other, I can say that segment DE is parallel to segment GF by the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, last proof here. It says given angle one is congruent to angle nine, and angle nine is congruent to angle 15. So that's my first statement. I'm just gonna list it. And now look what it wants us to prove. It wants us to prove that A is parallel to B. And then we also have to prove that C is parallel to D. So we're gonna prove, we're gonna do our proof in two separate statements you can see here. Um, because the information that we're actually given works out really nicely for us. If angle one is congruent to angle nine, think about that. I can say that line C is parallel to line D 
because the relationship of one and nine are corresponding angles. So that would be the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So that checks off this part. Okay, C and D, done. Now I want to, I could say that line A is parallel to line B, okay, because along transversal D, notice angle 9 is congruent to angle 15. What's the relationship between those angles? If they're congruent and they're exterior, alternate exterior angles, that's how for a fact I know A is parallel to B, because along this transversal of 9 and 15, um, I've got that converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. I know there's a lot of information in this video. Please rewatch as much as you need so that you can see how the problems were done, especially the proofs. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.